Hi, I'm Ed, the creator of Chromatos. I want to show you what's new in version 1.1, which is available now in the App Store. The best news of this release is a big pricing change. A lot of you asked for simpler, more affordable pricing, so we've done exactly that. The standard subscription is discontinued, and Pro now costs less than the original standard plan. Exact prices vary by region, so check it out in the app. If you've already purchased a standard or Pro subscription, first of all, thank you so much for your support. And don't worry, your purchase will be adjusted fairly. Just have a look in your account settings in the app for instructions. Also, the watermark is now completely removed from the free version up to 1080 HD output, but the two patch save limit still remains. Check out our blog for details at www.chromatos.app. Next up, Apple just released iOS 26. Chromatos 1.1 fully supports the new OS as well as some cool new features. The user interface now gets a liquid glass treatment with a look and feel that's consistent with the new operating system. With the beta version I'm running now, the control panel overlays rendered with liquid glass do incur a slight performance impact. Or maybe you prefer the original look. That's why there's an option to toggle between liquid glass panels and the classic panels in the settings. What do you think about the glass panels? Let us know in the comments. If you're using an iPad with iOS 26, there's also now full menu bar support at the top of the screen. This is really handy if you're using a connected mouse or keyboard. There are also a few big changes to the graphics engine. In addition to 8-bit and 16-bit render modes, there's now a new 16-bit HDR mode. HDR expands the brightness range so highlights can be much brighter. This requires a device that supports HDR. Just be aware that patches created in one render mode may not render the same when played back in a different render mode, and this is especially true with HDR. And there's a new render resolution setting for changing between common resolutions. This is handy if you want to record a video at a different resolution for things like social media. Just change it here, then there's no need to edit the video later in a different app. There's also a new display mirroring option if you want to mirror all the controls to an external screen. This is useful for streaming or recording tutorials where you also want to display the controls to an external screen. In version 1.1, the built-in video recording has been massively improved. More than just bug fixes and performance improvements, you can now record videos when using 16-bit render mode. You can also record HDR videos when in HDR mode. This is really cool because if you ever try editing HDR video, it's kind of a pain. Now you can create color popping HDR videos optimized for social media instantly, no additional editing needed. In this release, there's also some fun new content. We now have a new cymatics generator, which is a simulation of how sand or liquid moves on a metal plate when vibrated with sound waves. The first page has standard controls you'll find on most generators. And the second page has parameters for the simulation. A and B parameters control the amplitude of two different wave patterns layered on top of each other. M and N control frequencies that determine the number of lines in each direction. It's a bit complicated to cover any more here, but you can Google cymatics to learn more. Just know that modulating multiple parameters simultaneously creates the most interesting results. The displace effect also gets some new SG signal garbler parameters. These create wobbly, noise-based distortions. SG controls the intensity. SG scale zooms the noise in and out. And SG shift moves the noise along a three-dimensional Z axis. Also new with Displace, the intensity of each channel-based distortion was doubled.
The warp effect also gets a new flip parameter, which complements the mirror nicely. While mirror lets you mirror around the vertical or horizontal axis, flip just flips the image around. You can flip the image vertically, horizontally, or both. There are also some changes to the crop X and crop Y parameters in the transform effect. These split up the image into horizontal or vertical slices. Before, these would create seams in the image, but now they're mirrored around the center of the slice. I think the mirroring looks organic and is better for most uses. There are also nine new factory presets included. You can enjoy these as is, but they're also a good way to learn more about how to use Chromatos. And finally, Chromatos now also supports Japanese language. That's it for now. You can check the change log on the website for all the details and additional changes. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.